Hi there, let's talk sports fans. Thanks for tuning into the first episode of Let's Talk Jets, joined by my co-host Jack Miguel. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you, man. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting this little weekly show started with you. And uh, yeah, man, we got a lot of Jets news to talk about. So let's get to it. Yeah. Um, before we get started, how was your week? Uh, my week was pretty good, man. Uh, it was a pretty busy week around my house. Uh, yesterday was my mother's birthday. So uh, busy day. Yes, her birthday is on St. Patrick's Day. So that's always uh, it's always an interesting day for me uh, every year. But yeah, my week was good, man. How was yours? Yeah, it's pretty good. We moved and everything. And, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. How'd that go? It's actually bigger than I thought because of COVID and my mobility. It's um, We're doing some pictures and it looked small, but you take what you can get. But it's actually bigger than it looked. And it's always a bonus when you get more than you think, which ties into some of maybe the Jets tactics as well. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Good for you, man. I'm uh, I'm super happy for you that that all panned out how you wanted it to. So good for you, man. This is uh, the start of many big things for you. Yeah. Um, and before we get started, tell everyone where they can find your music just um, to give you a little plug. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, you could, first of all, you could look me up on Instagram uh, at Jack Megali Music, uh, Jack Megali, M-E-G-A-L-E, music, all one word. Uh, check me out on Instagram. And from there, uh, you can hit my link tree up uh, and then you could, it could take you to uh, Spotify, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Music, wherever you listen to music, uh, you'll be able to find me if you just look up my name, Jack Megali. Um, yeah, I'm uh, trying to make some music. I'm on the <coughs> excuse me i'm on the uh the music grind if you will i've been doing it my whole life and uh it's you know besides talking about the jets it's pretty much the only thing i want to do for the rest of my life so just trying to make it happen man so all the support helps so uh thank you for giving me the opportunity to do that yep and friends and i encourage everyone to check it out um so before we get started, I'm excited to announce we've actually, for this show, got a sponsor. And I'd like to give a shout out and thanks to AR Sports Therapy. Aidan Rafferty is a sports therapist for a few of the Ireland international teams and some of the soccer teams over here. So I'd like to thank him for entering into this partnership. That's awesome, man. Very, very, you see what I said? Big things are happening, man. Yeah. Love it. Shout out. Yeah. And ties into the St. Patrick's theme, what we were discussing earlier. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, uh, my mother's birthday, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so if we get into free agency what's your take on the douglas from my uh, douglas's tactics during free agency my take is i was okay with last year that he was maybe a bit prudent because of the uh, pandemic and i thought he'd be a bit more i never thought he'd go hard eh? but i thought he'd be a bit more, shall we say, aggressive, especially given he preached during all the interviews this year. He regrets that he didn't put the best team out there and they'll be aggressive. So I'm okay with Fungi going to obviously a contender, but some of these players are going to Washington. So um, what's your take on Douglas's, shall we say, (laughs) tactics? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping the faith, man. I'm, or I'm trying my best to keep the faith. Uh, I'm trying to trust the process. Um, you know, Joe Douglas is, uh, is being Joe Douglas, uh, yeah. right now. You know, he's not, he's not overpaying for anybody. Although some people could say that he overpaid for Corey Davis. Um, I don't really think so, but um, you know. He's he's being very strategic about free agency. Um, he's not gonna he's not gonna go out there and break the bank 
on a on a position like uh like wide receiver or on a position like running back um if anything i really wanted him to break the bank for for an offensive lineman and particularly yeah. thuny which you mentioned but um you know how are you how are you going to compete with going to a super bowl contender and still getting 16 million dollars a year you know like i mean it would have cost us an, incre- an incredibly insane amount of money to bring in Joe Thune, I feel like. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too mad at, at Douglas right now. And, um, you know, there was some, some signings he made today that um, at least one out of the two of them I, I like and I can get behind. Uh, the other one was a little sketchy, but we'll get into that in a little bit. But Joe, the, Joe Douglas with his, with his free agency tactics, um, you know, he, he's trying to build this thing through the draft and then use free agency to supplement the roster is, is how he puts it, you know? So um, he's going to, he's going to go after players um, and try to get the, the best bang for his buck. You know, he's, he's, he's going, he's going after value guys um, kind of like, you know, the, the tier B free agents. Um, Cause we're just, you know, the, the fact of the matter is we're, we're a two and 14 team uh last year was like the most abysmal pro football i've ever watched honestly um and it was it was you know disgraceful watching that team last year to say the least but um you know that that's that's obviously going to impact your free agency i mean some guys would rather you know win football games like joe thuny for example i'm sure i'm sure we could have paid him more than he ended up signing in kansas city for but but is he going to go to, is he going to come to us and, you know, potentially be a part of another huge dumpster fire or is he going to go, you know, block for Patrick Mahomes and, you know, play in another Super Bowl next year or within the next couple of years, you know? Yeah, um, I mean, I sort of, I'm not of the train what some people are. Oh, he's not spending Douglas out. I actually like him and I think he's doing a good job, but I think there is a middle ground that, don't pay a fortune, but there's certain deals that you could have convinced me to sign up for that Sam Samuels deal. And it is just some things when he couldn't get through me, I would yeah. have been okay with Lindsay because I'm a bit concerned that they certainly need to upgrade a guard and what they're going to draft two guards in the draft you don't want two rookie guards so in this the clark is further along than anyone's thinks and they think he's ready to step up and if he is why didn't we see him at the end of last season so it's concerning especially if they don't address coiner because that means i've got to address possibly get two of two guards and two coiners in the draft to start. Yeah. I mean, you're totally right, man. Uh, it's, it's definitely a bummer that we couldn't get Thuny because there is, you know, I, I, I wanted him to, if I wanted him to break the bank, like I just said, it was, it was going to be on offensive line on the offensive yeah. line, you know? So I would have been willing to pay Joe Thuny big money. Um, because uh, with the current state of this offensive line, how it was last year, I don't care who the quarterback is next year, even if it's miraculously Deshaun Watson somehow, you know, it's still, it's going to be Deshaun Watson running for his life, you know, and, and there's no, there's no point in assembling an offense uh, based around your, an MVP caliber quarterback. If you, if you, if you're not going to have guys that can block for him with the Cam Clark thing, that's a great point, man. That's, that's something that's been floating around, my head the past couple of days we've talked about it on the on the live streams a couple of times past couple of days um but yeah that's kind of a, a thing that i've been thinking in the back of my head is that maybe he is uh like you put it you know further along than than we would think maybe that's douglas's plan uh i personally wouldn't be completely opposed to um to drafting two guards honestly i was talking about no. that in the last in the last uh live stream i was in uh, yesterday i believe but um I, I, if I could, if I could, if I could guess what's going to happen, I would say uh, Douglas is going to end up trading down from that 34th spot. Probably. I hope, 
he doesn't trade down the 23rd spot, but I imagine he'll probably trade down the 34th spot. Um, and just, you know, get whatever kind of haul he can for that. So that would kind of eliminate us. Uh, because my fantasy is to take Elijah Barrett Tucker at 23 at a USC and then uh, Wyatt Davis, another guard uh, who's like a very popular name uh, amongst Jets fans right now. And I've looked at some tape of him and he looks like a beast and Elijah Barrett Tucker looks like a beast as well. So I feel like if we can get Makai Becton, two more rookies on that line and then we're and then we got um, McGovern and Fant, like I, I could have I could I could roll with that. That's that's kind of a solid offensive line, I think. I think Cam Clark might end up just being like a moving chess piece on that offensive yeah, line. Maybe he'll so. just remain a depth piece. But uh but yeah, who knows, man. I mean it's interesting because like you say, Clark something what I feel is it could be that they view him as sort of the swing guard and tackle, which if that is, that's okay. But if they don't assume they don't pick up a guard which says only really one what's at least serviceable, which I'm forgetting his name, but I think he played at the Chargers last year. But if assuming they don't, which I've got the feeling they won't sign anyone, then another thing that's floating around in my head is will he keep Donald trade down and maybe look to get two guards, which can you imagine the reaction in New York if oh that my God. happens? <laughs> um, you could convince a lot. I have, I've had a couple of um, reporters on recently, and they've said they've spoke to a few NFL executives, and um, Donald's trade value isn't as high as some. Um, of uh, national media would have you believe and if that is the case would Douglas look at, at it's better to keep him and build the line I'm not saying that is the case but it does beg repression because they've got some massive holes at calling her and guard yeah I mean we were talking about this on, on our live stream today earlier as well um you know, it's it's really making more and more sense in my head as I think about it uh, for them to keep Sam for at least one more year, trade back that second pick to like the number eight spot with the Panthers or something like that, grab that guy Kyle Pitts, roll with Sam as the quarterback, and then I uh, – you know Green Bean, obviously. You interviewed Green Bean. Yeah, yeah. Um, Green Bean was saying to Richie that um, on uh, on Ryan's show the other night, uh, Green Bean was saying to Richie that, um, you know, the value of that second pick could be uh, a second and third round pick this year and a first, second and third next year. Because that's that second pick isn't just a number two pick that it's a quarterback, you know, it's a quarterback yeah. for a team that thinks they're ready to take the next step if they get their quarterback like the Carolina Panthers. So, um, you know, I, I think that more and more in my head, I feel like Joe Douglas is not going to pass on an opportunity like that. You know, I mean, Sam Darnold is still so young. And, and the fact of the matter is, you know, regardless of how he plays this year, that doesn't lock us into having Sam as our franchise quarterback for the next 15 years. We could have, we could reevaluate the quarterback position in one more season if Sam, you know, stinks it up again. But I think the opportunity that you have right now, already with a young quarterback, and, you know, Trevor Lawrence might be the truth. I'm still not sold on Justin Fields, Zach Wilson. You know what I'm saying? I, I would I would rather – I don't think they're going to be anything too super, super duper special in the league. I think they both have potential, but I, can't, I don't think they're going to be anything crazy special. So I'm sticking with Sam. I'm trading back that number two spot for a complete, complete haul while still having a top 10 pick and being able to draft, uh, you know, let's say hopefully uh, Kyle Pitts, like a generational type uh, tight end. This, people are saying this guy's going to be. And then you get five additional draft picks on top of that. So as a general manager, I don't really know how you say no to that, you know, especially if you're Joe Douglas, who's looking to build this thing through the draft, uh, you know, it's, 
it's definitely uh it's definitely a super enticing uh proposal for a general manager i'd say i mean i know i would i would do that in a heartbeat because you you still uh you don't know what you're going to have out of Sam Darnold this year with a totally new offense, supposed to be a very quarterback friendly uh, offense. And you know what, what if, what if all of a sudden you realize you had your quarterback all along and then you, and then you get a complete haul for that number two spot. I just think that that would be the smartest decision. And if, if it doesn't pan out with Sam, then we, we reevaluate the quarterback position another season, but regardless of who your quarterback is, you take an opportunity as a general manager to, bring more talent onto your team. So I'm, that's what I'm doing. If I'm Joe Douglas, I'm rolling with Sam. I'm trading number two back. I'm building the depth of this roster, how it should be built. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing, man. It sounds very sweet. Yeah. I mean, um, it's definitely going to be interesting. And that brings me on to this talk about some of these signings. I mean, Jared Davis, there's not much to say. Actually, I don't hate the signing. From what I understand, he was misused a bit in Detroit and he has shown some potential for what you're paying him. I think he has, he reminds me of a bit of the fence signing where it was much maligned because the fans wanted a big name and he was the name would come out. First and but I can just see that he might do well, but it also makes me wonder if the reports are true about Mosley getting traded. But I just I struggle to see who would take on that contract and also what are you going to get for Mosley? Yeah, um, that's another thing that that Ryan. Uh... Jets talk 24 seven for those of you that don't know mentioned uh, the other day is that uh, Gerard Davis, uh, he has some friends that went to the same uh, university as Gerard Davis. And uh, they said, he's a, you know, he's a total freak so fast and, and just, uh, just very, very adapt out there and, and, and quick, uh, you know, a quick burst of speed. I just think that it's a perfect signing for for robert sala to kind of mold him a little bit you know what i'm saying yeah um i feel like it's not too expensive um i just think that it's you know similar to the carl lawson signing who we'll talk about eventually uh i just think that it's got untapped potential written all over it so i like the move obviously it's not a name that's going to knock your socks off but I, i i do like the move i think it's the typical joe douglas kind of signing um, and in terms of the CJ Mosley situation, I, I think it's kind of like maybe a bit of a safety blanket as well. You know, obviously, you know, we, we all know that CJ Mosley when healthy is a beast, but the fact of the matter is he hasn't played in, in, in virtually two full seasons. So, um, you know, it's not like he didn't get any older during that time. So now he's uh, you know, who knows what he's going to come back and he's going to be uh, playing like, so if I, I mean, and he's got a, a monstrous contract as well. So if I, if I'm Joe Douglas, I'm going to look to alleviate that from my organization. Um, I don't know what you get for CJ mostly. I, re- I really don't know, but uh, I know that I would try to make that move because I mean, if, if he comes back somewhere else and, and he lights it up and he's a beast, then that sucks. But the fact of the matter is he is due so much money in the next couple of years uh, that if you can, if you can get that contract off of our hands, then I think Joe Douglas is going to do it. Yeah. I agree. Um, going on to the next signing, Corey Davis, I actually don't mind the signing. I actually, he's one of the receivers. I would prefer they sign because I think, He's had a good two seasons and he's certainly an improvement on what Lev had. There's decent value and certainly if he continues to improve. So the way I look at it, it's, it's, there's not much risk there and there certainly could be some reward there. Yeah, I totally agree with you. That's a great way to put it. I mean... You go back at Corey Davis's career. He was, 
he was taken fifth overall by the Tennessee Titans uh, back in 2017. So he's clearly a guy that's still got uh, superstar potential written all over him. But, um, you know, some people will say they paid a little bit, mu- a little bit too much. And it, it, it was a, it was a nice, uh, a nice fat contract. Um, but I don't think it's overpaying when there's a glaring need for wide receiver improvement on the team. Um, so, so I'm fine with the signing, man. I mean, you look back on his stats the past year, in a in a run heavy offense that also has AJ Brown out there. Who's, who's, uh, you know, an incredible young receiver. He caught 65 balls for 984 yards and five touchdowns. And is, and he averaged 15.1 yards per catch, uh, which was his, which was the highest of his career so far. So I just think he's a player on the rise. I think he's probably entering, you know, the prime of his career. And I feel like, I feel like we got him at a, at a good time. So just like you said, man, I feel like there's, there's uh, not too much risk involved, but, but, very high potential uh, reward. So I love the signing, man. It's another, it's another Joe Douglas signing for sure. Yeah, I agree. And I feel the same said of their next sign. Certainly pass rush is something what they've needed. And Carl Lawson, I feel is a good song. He's, if you looked at the pass rushing class once, Shaq Bauer was tagged. If you look at the scheme, he was possibly the one what fitted the most. I know some fans wanted Ngokwe, but I'm not his biggest fan. I feel, yes, statistic-wise, he gets his sacks, but the last two years, I ain't been a fan of his play, and I understand he has had the contract situation and he's moved around teams a few times last year, but I just feel there's less risk with Lawson. And I also feel next to Prun and Roo Rooms, those two will be a formidable pair. Yeah, I agree, man. Carl Lawson is another signing that I absolutely love. Uh, you know, I said it a few minutes ago when I was talking about Gerard Davis. Uh, Carl Lawson has untapped potential written all over him. He's like 25, 26 years old, I believe. Uh, You know, the stat that might jump out at you the most is that he only had uh, five and a half sacks last year as an edge rusher. But he had uh, 64 uh, QB pressures, I believe, and 32 QB hits, which was second in the league, uh, only behind TJ Watt. So, you know, when you look – when Five and a half sacks might not jump off the page, but but he really was one of the most effective and productive edge rushers in football last year. So I, I think I think that it's a great signing. Um, I think that the fact that we have Robert Sala as the head coach of this team now is just gonna mold him and unlock him his true potential. And um, I just love the signing, man. I think that just like you said, him and him next to. Uh, Quentin Williams and Franklin Myers, and then you rotate in Nathan Shepard and Foley Fatukasi. And then hopefully we uh, we pick up another edge in the draft to put on the other side. And, uh, and you know, maybe we, uh, there's, a, there's a guy, Jabari Zuniga, who, who uh, you know, still, still might have some, uh, some kinks to work out. I, th- I think he can be okay, but I'm not sure how much, how much time he's going to see on the, on the edge this year. So I would like to draft another edge presence to be out there with Lawson. But I mean, with the names I just mentioned, let's say, let's say uh, we, we trade back and grab a, and grab a lineman. Like you, like you said earlier, let's say we trade back in the, in the first round of the draft and grab a lineman. And then at the 23rd pick, we take that kid, uh, that edge rusher, Jalen Phillips. I mean, and all of a sudden you got Lawson, Quentin Williams, Franklin Myers, Foley Fatukasi, and you got, um, Phillips on the other edge all of a sudden that's a that's a brutal defensive line so I I think that we're definitely going to look to get another another edge out there this year as well um but but Carl Lawson is definitely a great star man I think I think he's going to be really good for this Jets team and I think that coach Sala which uh he actually I actually saw on Twitter today that 
some reporter um, tweeted that, you know, when they asked Carl Lawson why the Jets, he said uh, that Robert Sala was a big reason why. And he was very impressed with him. And once he heard that he got hired, he uh, he looked up a lot of information about him and was just super impressed with the guy. So so that's always a good sign. You know, hopefully hopefully Coach Sala will bring out the best in all of our players, but especially that that defensive front, man. I mean, look at what San Francisco has been doing to opposing quarterbacks over the past couple of years. Uh, with the guys they have over there. So Coach Sal is definitely going to want something similar to that here in New York. I wouldn't be surprised if he, uh, if him and Joe Douglas push for an edge rusher in the draft as well as uh, the Carl Lawson sign, which I love. I agree. And the next signing after waiting a couple of days, Keelan Cole signed from the Jaguars. And I actually feel sorry for him. You had the reports break that Maybe they're in the hunt for Juju, which I'm not trying to get my hopes up for. But so the fans are dreaming of Juju, and now his signing gets announced. So his signing is sort of met with a bit of downheartedness, and you've got to feel for God. I actually don't hate the signing because. I think he's productive, and you've got to remember with the Davis signing, at best, he's probably going to be wide receiver four. So that's actually a good sign for the receiving core because whether they do Juju or Crowder's about, I think four is the top he'll be. And that's a pretty good situation for the receiving core, and certainly better than what they've had in some time yeah i mean i i i don't see why the keelan cole signing is drawing a lot of hate from people i i feel like yeah curtis samuel would have been nice juju would have been nice um but this just tells me that receiver is another position that joe douglas is going to look for in the draft this year um and you know when you're when you talk about keelan cole (coughs) excuse me um, he had as many touchdowns as Corey Davis did last season. Uh, he caught 55 balls, 642 yards, five touchdowns. Um, you know, in a, in an offense where, where he was certainly not the number one guy at all. Uh, I mean, you know, DJ Chark has been lighting up the league now. He's a very explosive, very good wide receiver. Um, and you know, James Robinson was kind of taking over that running game down there in Jacksonville as well. So, so Keelan Cole definitely wasn't the go-to guy in terms of uh, Jacksonville's offense last year and still managed to have a pretty productive season for himself. So I totally like the signing again. I think it's super typical of what Joe Douglas is trying to do to build this team up in the way he sees fit. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see any reason, I guess it's just because of the name and people were waiting for a bigger name, but I mean, I think it's a little immature to to get up to get upset over over you know signing a guy like Keelan Cole, who uh, I think is just going to be like you said, like probably uh, a number four receiver. But um, I I think he's a good number four to have. I really do. I agree. And the last song and what they made is Dan Feeney from the Chargers. <laughs> I mean. Um, there's not much to say about him. Yeah. People are looking at is they're going to cut Lewis and or Van Roten for him. What he's actually is is Andrews's replacement. And I did a bit of a deep dive into him, and his skill set looks exactly the same as Andrews. Can play guard and center, and he has let in in the last three years, apparently 27 sacks he's allowed, which is about Andrews' standard. I mean, I don't like to be negative about a player, but let's be honest, he is sort of... uh, He's a backup. Yeah, dead last backup. (laughs) Yeah. uh, (laughs) Body in camp. Um. He is not a starter in the NFL or anywhere. Put like this, if you start him, you're tanking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely uh it's definitely not a signing that that is gonna 
make you say wow actually it might make you say wow just in a negative way yeah but um but yeah i mean there's really not much to say man he's just uh like you said he's just gonna be a, a body out there during camp and he's gonna be a a backup probably the last back <laughs> the last backup um i don't really know much about the guy but the things the brief things i saw on twitter after the signing was made i'm like oof um and then connor hughes tweeted this guy is a backup not a starter yeah. um so yeah i mean i guess it's just you know more depth on the team hopefully we never have to see him touch the field because that would mean that somebody got hurt or we're you know oh and 13 again so um yeah man uh maybe that means that cam clark is moving up the depth chart because we signed uh we signed a guy like this so who knows yeah and uh just to finish up um the last subject i wanted to say is what do you see them doing for the rest of free agency personally speaking i can't see them do much they might sign juju i'm not convinced about it the more you hear you don't see them signing and calling us so um it's hard to see they'll make any move because there's no O-linemen left what they can sign apart from obviously there's a couple of tackles there but I don't see them signing the tackle unless it's a really good deal um are you pretty much of the same opinion yeah I'm, I'm feeling the same exact way man it's kind of dwindling at this point for the Jets um you know when you look at the moves that were made I think the moves that were made were the right moves but I just wish there were a couple more of them, you know, yeah. I don't want to end free agency with, you know, millions of dollars still left in the cap. Um, but, but it is what it is, man. I, like I said, in the very beginning of this stream, I'm, I'm just trying my hardest to keep my faith in Joe Douglas. Love the Corey Davis move. Love the Carl Lawson move. I, I am very intrigued by the, uh, by the Gerard Davis move. And I can get behind the Keelan Cole move as well, man. I, I, I really can so uh where do i see them going from here in free agency um i don't really think they have much more to go man i like you said maybe that maybe they're still in talks with with juju who knows uh i think that's that's kind of a pipe dream at this point i i that's what my gut tells me but um yeah i mean we have so many damn draft picks maybe joe douglas is done man maybe because uh because like you said it's not looking good for a cornerback either um i don't know if anything happened with keanu neal but that would be an interesting uh that would be an interesting pair at safety with uh with marcus may and keanu neal and then maybe you see if ashton davis can play some cornerback or anything like or something like that who knows yeah but, he um, is someone odd one just because the Patriots have the high end, so that you either Aston Davis really has to step up, or you need someone else there. So it'll be seeing. It's a tricky one, also because it, if they're not re-signing Paul, and they're not going to sign a coin back, obviously, what are you going to do? You need an outside coin, so. Um, even if you slot Hall in as a starter, that would mean you'll probably need two coin of backs what's ready to start. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we can reach an agreement with Brian Poole, man. I mean, I didn't I didn't think that was gonna be the case, and I didn't think I would be saying that, but now I I don't see many other options, right? No. I mean I don't, I don't see many other options besides obviously taking a cornerback in the draft. We'll see how early Joe wants to do that. But yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. Maybe Kyle Fuller now is actually a name that's floating around too. Yeah. But, but, you know, we were talking about it before the stream started. Joe Douglas seems like he's not really that interested in signing uh, older guys to, uh, to uh, you know, lucrative deals he'd rather he'd rather get value get younger players and um yeah so i mean it would it would be an improvement and i would love that but yeah joe douglas is looking at it from the general manager's perspective he's looking at it as you know this is this is a long process 
And, you know, most of us fans are looking at it like, all right, how are we going to make our team instantly better next year? You know, so we want guys like Kyle Fuller and stuff like that because, you know, oh, we need a cornerback. Go get Kyle Fuller. He's available. Joe Douglas is not thinking the same way we are, you know, so I know it can get frustrating, but we just have to acknowledge that as fans. And, you know, it really is a process, man. When you entered this organization in the state that it was in and then, you know, you set yourself back even further by bringing in Adam Gase. Um to coach the team it, it's you know it's a tough spot that joe douglas finds himself in thank god he's a smart man and he's acquired so many draft picks for us and he's uh he's you know kept us in cap heaven when a lot of organizations are in cap hell um so you know he's doing it he's doing the right thing so far he really is uh it, now it's just got to pay off on the field but i think it will in time i really do yeah i agree and uh just to finish up i thought we'd talk a little bit about future of the show we're going to run a few competitions because we're going um i've started producing mugs and shirts and for our more dedicated listeners we will uh, we will never sell them but they'll just be a little thank you for the fans and um once the football season started i thought we'd run a fantasy football competition if you'll be keen to enter that I thought be a nice way to interact with the fans. Yeah, dude. Let's do it, man. Fantasy fantasy uh gets under my skin, but I I can't stop doing it. I do it every year. So let's do it, man. That would be beautiful. Yeah, I thought we'd have a bit of a group chat and a bit of a way for people to get to know us better. And I'm looking at a top prize of Two hundred and fifty dollars plus a um, signed jersey by Patrick Mahomes because they're only increasing value. So that's something what um, you get with cash and obviously a nice little keepsake. Yeah, man, that would be awesome. I could, I would definitely take part in that with you, man. I'd be honored. Yeah, okay, thanks. Um, that pretty much wraps up today, but we'll be back next week. Yes, we will. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for having me on, bro. I'm excited to keep doing this with you. Yep, and until next week, let's talk sport fans. <laughs>